Hello, my name is Thiago Davi Curi Buzarello. In this video, I'll show you my presentation of my paper that I presented in the Southern Power Electronics Conference and the Brazilian Power Electronics Conference for the year of 2019. This conference was held in Brazil in the city of Santos. The title of this presentation is Zero Crossing Detection Frequency Estimator Math Combined with a Common Future for Non-Ideal Power Grids. This research belongs to a joint research I have with some colleagues from the University of Londrina. The Introduction Measurements of electrical variables in the power grid are being obtained since the beginning of the first installations of the electrical sector. And initially, and for a long time, these measurements were easy to measure and most of them were clean signals. But with the advancement of the electronic technology, the introduction of distributed generators, a lot of nonlinear loads, several disturbances that were once unworded are now causing problems for an accurate measurement. And the grid frequency, which is hardly deviated from its nominal value, is nowadays suffering vast variations due to the occurrences like those I have said. And so measuring the frequency for a long time was easy and accurate, but now the distortions, noise, a lot of disturbances that were once unworded is now causing severe problems in, on the measurement. And, and measuring the grid frequency has an important role in the con concept of smart grid and it is really important and indispensable for the system operators. Based on the value of the frequency, the system operator may decide the best dispatch, the power dispatch of the generator and by knowing the frequency of some points along the grid, the, the system operator can decide actions to make the system stable or more stable and therefore there is a need for an accurate fast and reliable measurements of the grid frequency even though the grid is nowadays not primarily sinusoidal and the grid is not directly measured so we need to estimate the frequency it means that the, the frequency measurement may be obtained from an indirect method. Therefore, the frequency is estimated. And this paper proposes a zero crossing detection frequency estimator method using common filter for non-ideal power grids. Here is the simplified diagram of the proposed method. It is really simple, it is make, made by two blocks here, one is the common filter and another one is the frequency estimator and here we see that the diagram is a closed loop there is here a feedback path in order to make this stable and more reliable so considering here an input signal which is a single phase voltage it may be really distorted noisily with harmonic distortion Later, this signal is measured with a sensor and passes through the common filter, which in turn produces two orthogonal signals, and most important, they are clean. Okay. So, even though the input signal is really distorted and out of phase and so far from a sinusoidal waveform, the clean, the common filter produces here two orthogonal signals and they are really clean. After that, the frequency estimator here can count two crossing, two zero crossing and estimate the frequency of this signal here. And you have here uh, a unit delay in order to avoid algebraic loops. So the value of n that I'll show you in the next slides is sent back to the matrix A of the common filter, showing that this is an, an adaptive feature that has an adaptive future feature and is, is really good for this measurement. Okay. If you can compute the 
arc tangent of these two values, you can have here the theta, which is a wrap signal here that you I'll show you later. So the frequency estimator, uh, again, let's try to discuss a little bit more. After the common filter computed, computes these two clean signals, considering the input really distorted and noisily, if I compute this math here, I have these ramp signals varying from minus 2 pi to 2 pi. Okay, so I have here a lot of steps and I can make just a counter here from a zero crossing here to the next and I can count how many steps there are across two zero crossing. And for example, if the counting is n, it means 200 steps, it means that each step has 1.8 degree. Considering here the, the sampling frequency equals to 12 kilohertz, uh, it means that the frequency of the signal is 12k over 200, the number of steps, which is 60 hertz. And another example, if the counting is 150, it means that each step has 2.4 degree. Considering the same sampling frequency, I can see that the frequency of the input signal is 80 hertz. And this is the proposed method. It is just the counting of the number of steps from one cr zero crossing to the next zero crossing and considering here a fixed sampling frequency I can compute how is how much is the input frequency the, sig the, the frequency of the input signal okay. so the merit of this proposal is on this counting but also on the common filter which makes the a really polluted signal to be really clean and easy to have this counting and detect the zero crossing. The common future algorithm is here. It is really well known in the literature. There are five steps here to compute the common future. The step one is just the initial values. I have here step two which is the prediction of the state and the covariance error. We see here that the matrix A, matrix A is used on these steps and they are updated of all time based on the value of N as shown in the previous slides. Step number three is the computation of the common gain. This is one of the most important because it, ma it makes the, the new value of the weight of the filter and here is the step four which is the computation of the estimative, I mean it, it computes the output of the filter. So we have here that the output is based on the prediction and also on the common gain, on the common filter gain. Okay. And the last step is the computation of the covariance error in order to make this error goes to zero. The model, modeling the system, this slide shows some equations that it is necessary to more model the system and use in the common filter. I have here the input signal, which is, which is a single phase. Then after some algebra, we can conduct to, this, to these equations here. In the paper, we have more details of how these equations are obtained. Experimental results. And the proposed frequency estimator method was experimentally verified in a digital signal controller. This one, 28379D launch badge, which is um, shown in this picture. And all these signals are, all the frequency estimator are within the DSP. So in order to verify the results, I'm using the digital analog converter of the same board. Okay, so for the input signal, I have here a signal generator, so that I can include here a signal with noise, I can include some deviation of the phase, deviation in the frequency, and verify the efficacy of the proposed math. This first figure here shows the input signal, which is the voltage. This is an ideal situation where the voltage is really clean, and we have here we see here that the, the both signals of the output, the, or the common filter output. 
so considering one voltage I have here two orthogonal signals they are in phase and ninth nine degree shift related to the voltage and they are really clean when I make a, a step here with 90 degrees in the input voltage I can see here how the common filter behaves so initially they were in phase and at this moment I have here a 90 degree phase displacement and after less than one cycle we can see here that they are synchronized again here is the frequency of the common filter so I have here the same step of a 90 degree phase shift so initially you have here the input signal one of the output signal of the common filter and, ha and having here the frequency estimated we have here they are scaled to for these values here for this range and at this point here there is the phase shift and you can clearly see here that after that the frequency is computed again after this transi transitory behavior the frequency reaches the steady state condition again here is a change from 60 to 50 just to verify how the filter behaves so the frequency was estimated before and after the transition we saw that the frequency goes to the new value estimated here is the situation where the input voltage is highly noisy. we see here that the input voltage has a lot of noise but the common filter still is still generating two output signals in phase and really clean considering this highly noisy input signal and you can clear you can see here a uh, more severe transition where the frequency is being computed and uh, suddenly I reduce the amplitude to half and also I include the noise when you can see here that the frequency is still constant even though at the presence of this noise the frequency is kept constant at the measured value this frequency estimator can be used as a PLL so we have here this is the rep signal that we are counting there are 200 steps here but so this varies from minus 2 pi to 2 pi so it can be used as a PLL2 and the same result but now with the input signal with noise we can clearly see here that the synchronization is kept unchanged just a short discussion just a short comparison between the proposed math and the conventional PLL based on a second order generalized integrator which is a good PLL so we have here the input signal since the input signal is clean sinusoidal we have here 60 Hz the measurement using the PLL which is really good however if the input signal has harmonic distortion the PLL shows here an oscillatory behavior around the 60 Hz with uh, relatively high values on the proposed map we, we see here that the frequency is being estimated really good even the presence of harmonic distortion showing that this map is really attractive and efficacy some acknowledgments I'd like to thank to the University of Federal University of Santa Catarina as well as Federal as well as the University of Londrina. I'd like to thank to the CNPQ as well as to the organization of this conference. And some conclusions. Experimental results collected in the experimental kit show the efficacy of the proposed frequency estimator map. The proposed map was verified under the applications of phase displacement, frequency variation and the inclusion of noise in the input signal. And for all cases, the estimated frequency did not present neither oscillatory nor unpredictable behavior. Therefore, the proposed frequency estimator 
math based on the common filter is an attractive solution to estimating the frequency value of a non-ideal power grid. The simulation files used in this paper are freely available on my webpage. You can just go there and download the simulink files of this research. And thank you. If you have some questions, I'll be so glad to answer. If you have, uh, here is my email. If you can contact me, I'll be so glad to answer your emails. Thank you very much.